Hey what's up, it's Chris from Rooker Films and in today's video I'm going to explain a few technical terms that will help to improve your photography. Let's do it. So you've just got yourself a brand new camera and you turn to online tutorials to figure out how to take amazing photos, but you're hit in the face with ISO, shutter speed, aperture, and other technical terms. What do these mean and how do these terms affect your photos? Understanding these terms and knowing how each different setting will have an effect on your photo will improve the quality of your images. So. Let's get into it. So first up, we have shutter speed. This is how long your shutter stays open for when you take a picture. High shutter speeds will give you sharp, crisp images and low shutter speeds will give you blurry cinematic images. But knowing when to use which is crucial when taking photos. So let's say you're at a sports game taking a picture of a player, for example. They're gonna be running down the pitch and you need a high shutter speed to capture them in sharp detail. I would recommend trying one over 200 but if this is still not sharp enough, then try going all the way up to one over a thousand. Be careful though, the higher the shutter speed, the darker the image, so it's a constant juggling act between sharpness and brightness. So on the other end of the spectrum is a low shutter speed. Let's say you're in a town center in the middle of the night, for example. You wanna try and create that gorgeous light streak effect in your images. Well, to do this, we need to use a lower shutter speed. Try keeping your shutter open for more than five seconds. Remember though, longer shutter speeds mean brighter images, so it's very easy to overexpose your images when using these long exposures. Aperture and f-stop are basically the same thing. In short, aperture basically affects your focus. So let's say you want to take a photo where the foreground and the background are both in focus. You're going to need a higher f-stop. Closing your shutter down to f22 is how you achieve this. So let's say you're taking a portrait for example. You want to try and get the subject in complete focus and blur out the background as much as possible. Well, to do this, we need to open the aperture up as much as possible. Now, if your camera or lens can support it, you want to try and open it up to f1.8. However, if you can't, just get it open to f2, f3, f4, f5, as low as you physically can. When you open up your aperture, especially to somewhere like f1.8 or f2, then focus can get really difficult. So pay very close attention to where your focus is. ISO is basically your brightness. ISO starts at 100 and runs all the way up into the thousands. However, you always want to try and keep your ISO as low as is physically possible. Cranking up your ISO to the numbers of 1000, 2000, 3000 will introduce a lot of digital noise into the images and this will make your images look really ugly and really unprofessional. So try and keep your ISO as low as is physically possible. White balance is basically the color of your light. Light is measured in kelvins. Now, typically the colder the light, the higher the number. So shooting outdoors in daylight would require your white balance to be 5,500K. And shooting inside in a warm environment with tungsten lights would require your white balance to be set to 3,200K. Calibrating your camera to the color of the light of the environment will ensure that your camera captures the correct colors. However, when shooting photos, you're pretty much okay to just set this to automatic as your camera does a very good job at setting the white balance for you. RAW and JPEG are both file formats. Shooting in JPEG is your default camera setting. However, it leaves you with very little room in the edit to color correct. Now, RAW is a higher quality file format that shoots much more information than JPEG. Shooting in RAW gives you much more flexibility in the edit as you're able to pull down your highlights and push the shadows up. Raw photos take up much more space on your SD card than JPEG photos as they capture much more information. This does mean that you won't be able to take as many images on your camera when shooting in RAW as you would do when shooting in JPEG. However, if you have multiple SD cards, then this is not a problem that you have to worry about. I would always recommend grabbing more cards and shooting in RAW as your photos will always end up looking much better. Understanding these terms and knowing how each different setting will affect your image will make you a much better photographer and will massively improve your work. If you found this video helpful whatsoever, then please do let me know in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more videos like this one in the future, then don't forget to press the subscribe button. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do truly appreciate it. I hope you have the most amazing day today and I will see you next time.